Welcome to our first video presentation for Math as Language. 1.2 Mathematical Language and Symbols What are the characteristics of math language? Math is non-temporal or math language is non-temporal. It is only an is. It has no present, past, and future like ordinary human language. Math language uses the statements of being. And how do you write a statement of being? You use the word is. Something is something. That is how you write the essential characteristic of something. The being of that something. Something is something. Let us compare it with human conversation in English. This is how we say it. I will eat. I went to school. It rained yesterday for languages wherein verbs has a conjugation or verbs, verbs have a conjugation. This is how you say it. I will eat, went to school, rained. But some language has no conjugation of verbs. What they do is they just add an action word and modify it with an adverb. So let's say, for example, eat tomorrow, bath tomorrow bath yesterday so bath yesterday means i took a bath yesterday or i took a bath how about this one this one is another statement that indicates time this is something that went on for many years dogs evolved from wolves so this is something which began hundreds and possibly thousands of years ago now how about this the line AB intersects L at point C. Well, this is a sentence that contains uh, a math language. Uh, this is how we describe or symbolize a line or a line segment. We use letters. We use small letters to name a line. And we use capital letters to name a point. So a part of this is, is a math language. The same with this one. Okay, this is a math symbol for line segment or line. This is our usual math symbol for angle. But this one is not entirely a, a language of math. This is the language of teaching mathematics. Those two things are different. The language of math and the language of teaching mathematics. Because if you were to th think through this sentence, pay attention to these words, intersex and bisex. Those are active words. Those are active verbs. Verbs that indicate something is doing on something. Now, if you were to think it through, how can a line do something on another thing? How can you attach an active verb to it when it's not even a living thing? Lines are not living things. They are not physical objects. They are abstract ideas. So this one, when, when teachers use intersex and bisex, this is the language of teaching math. We use these words, we use active verbs, because we want to imbue the topics with some human quality. And people are humans. People like to read and talk about something that is about humans. And so what we do is, we use active verbs to give the line some quality of being capable of action. But the truth of the matter is, no, a line is not capable of action because it's not even a living thing. Okay, so how do you state the essential being of a mathematical object? Well, you just use the word is. x is equal to 5. For every real number x that is not equal to 0, there is a real number y such that xy is equal to 1. P is the point of intersection of lines L and M. Given a triangle ABC, if D is the midpoint of AB and E is the midpoint of BC, then DE is parallel to AC. This last statement here is your midline theorem. So this is how you state the essential being of something. You just say right away, what is it? Okay, so let us bring here some objects from geometry. 
So how do you describe this, this line using mathematical language? L is perpendicular to AB. How about this one? L is a perpendicular bisector of AB. Or if you are not familiar with the word bisector, you see in math you cannot just say bisector if you have not defined it yet. So assuming for example that you have not defined what bisection is, so this is what you can do. D is the intersection of AB and L and it is the midpoint of AB. More on geometry. Okay, so how do we use mathematical language to, to describe this one? P is the intersection of lines L and M. If CD is a perpendicular bisector of AB, then CA is congruent to CB. Mathematics language has no emotional content. It has no equivalent words for joy, happiness, sadness. It does not contain statements that convey distress, satisfactions. Let us compare it with human conversation in English. For example, the Filipino people are jubilant about Pac-Man's winning the match. The Filipino people mourn the passing of Fernando Poe Jr. Math language is precise and concise. It prefers brevity. Brevity means being short. It is exact and accurate. It has no need for unnecessary words, which is why between two solutions, one is long, or assuming that they are correct, between two solutions, one is long and one is shorter, teachers would always prefer the shorter solution. Let us compare it with human conversation in English. I am filled with happiness. The shorter version of that is something like this. I am happy. The, that bicycle is truly very, very expensive. The shorter version of that is to say that that bicycle cost 200,000. How about this one? You know, I always hear about this during commencement exercises. You know, the school invited a speaker. The MC would describe the accomplishments of the speaker. And before introducing the speaker, this is what she says. I am pleased to introduce to you our most distinguished alumni who is listed in Forbes list of top 10 wealthy Filipinos, Mr. Manny Villar. The shorter version of this. The shorter version without unnecessary words is to simply say, Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker, Mr. Manny Villar. So brevity, being exact and accurate, and not using unnecessary words, those are the additional characteristics of a math language. So let us pay attention to this. Line CD makes a right angle with line AB. Okay, yes, that is true. But this one is, this one is the language of teaching math. How about this? Point A, point A's distance from D is equal to point B's distance from D. Uh, from D. A and B, okay, their distance from D is the same. That's, that's the meaning of that. They are congruent. The line segments are congruent. But this one, is the language of teaching math because this this can be made shorter and this in fact uses many unnecessary words let's say for example this one okay you don't have to call it line line cd because this one is understood to be line in the language of mathematics the same with this one you don't have to say point a because a means a point so there is some redundancy in this sentence so let us write it in math language. How about this? So this one is equivalent to this statement. It is concise. It is shorter. C, it, is, it has no need for unnecessary words. CD is perpendicular to AB. But even this one is composed of many characters, more than a dozen characters. So we can even make this shorter, and we can do it by using math symbols. 
CD is perpendicular to AB. This is our symbol for being perpendicular. D is the midpoint of AB. Yes, that is how we put it in math language. We, we state the essential character or essential being of, of point D. It is the midpoint. But we can make this even shorter using math symbols. AD is equal to DB. Okay, we are assuming that AB is a line. So if D is the midpoint, then AD is equal to DB. How about this one? If CD is perpendicular or is a perpendicular bisector of AB, then CA is congruent to CB. This is a theorem in isosceles triangles. Okay, but we can make this even shorter using math symbols. If CD is perpendicular to AB and look at that, AD is equal to DB, that means D is the midpoint and uh, CD bisects AB at D, then CA is congruent to CB. So this is closer to the essence of a math language. It is shorter. It has no need for unnecessary words. It just states the statement of being. So these are the characteristics of math language. It is non-temporal. It has no emotional content. It is precise and concise. So we must distinguish math language from the language of teaching math. Because if you were a teacher and if you are teaching math, you have to talk a lot. You may have to use redundant words. But that's because our aim here is to be understood.